Hey, shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Master, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua Hamashiach. So today, my fellow brothers and sisters, we're going to be talking about there is no Savior besides me and my response to it. Okay, this is another important important message for those who are, who continually reject Yeshua HaMashiach as the son of Yahweh and our savior. All right. So, I want to start off first by savior in Hebrew is the word Yasha, which means save, savior, deliver, help, and salvation. And in this message I will prove that Yeshua, that is what Yeshua came to do. So we will discuss uh, the Aramaic and compare it with the Masoretic text and even look at the Odeo, the ancient Hebrew pictograph, which means signs, that ancient language, which came before Paleo-Hebrew and came before the modern form of uh, the Babylonian script. We're going to look at all of that to tell us the truth about Yahweh and his son and savior, Yeshua, that he sent to the earth. I have, I have done uh, defending the truth videos about Yeshua coming to die for our sins um, quite a bit on this channel. Yahweh sent Yeshua because he loves us and does not want us to perish. However, the world has to accept the blood atonement on the execution stake for forgiveness of sins and acknowledge that he rose, Yeshua rose on the third day. Okay, so with that, with that foundation, let's go to the scripture that everyone, not everyone, let me rephrase that. Let me go to the scripture that people who try to support their doctrine saying Yeshua is not Savior, they go to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11. Okay, Isaiah 43, verse 11 in the Masoretic says, I, I, I am Yahweh, and besides me, there is no Savior. Okay, now, I've been saying for a while that we have to get back to the ancient text of Scripture. And like I said, even the audio. And uh, I'll show it to you. This is the audio that I'm referring to. This is the, the pictograph. The o means... That means signs, okay? So he gave us picture language, the original language, all right? So we have to get back to the ancient text. We have to look at the Hebrew or the Aramaic. And like I said, everything that I'm reading out of now is out of the uh, the Aramaic, but shut up the Old Testament, the Aramaic, English, um, New Testament, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll look at the Septuagint um, every now and again because it's still a good source, but the Aramaic is where we need to go, all right? So we're going to look at all of these and um, to determine the original meaning that our Father Yahweh was conveying to his people. Okay, now this same verse in the Aramaic Peshetta reads differently than that Masoretic text written by the Pharisees. And we know that the Pharisees tried to hide the prophecies of Yeshua HaMashiach because they did not believe in him. The Pharisees didn't believe in him. We look no further than the Brit HaDashah. The New Testament, you can see that the Pharisees rejected Yeshua when he walked the earth. These same Pharisees came up with their own scripture version to delete the prophecies of Yeshua. And lo and behold, what's going on today? People are reading those Masoretic texts and they're coming up to this conclusion that Yeshua does not exist. Or some people believe he was just a man, um, whatever the case may be, okay? But I tell, you, I tell you today is that those who continue to walk in the footsteps of the Pharisees is not going to bode well for them or anybody who does not repent and accept this truth. Now, we, I just read Isaiah 43, 11, where it says, I am Yahweh, there is no Savior besides me. Now, let's look at it in the Aramaic Peshetta. I, even I, am Yahweh, and besides me, there is no Savior. Okay, notice how the Aramaic Peshetta says, even I. That part is missing in the Masoretic text. Because, um, and even the King James got this right. 
okay? That is because Yahweh and Yeshua are speaking together as one, Achad. And I will present many scriptures to support exactly what I'm saying here, okay? But I just want to start off with that to show you where we're going with this. I, even I, that is Yahweh and Yeshua speaking together as one, all right? So let's, let's go on a little further here. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4, the Masoretic text says, Say to those with anxious, say to those with anxious heart, be strong, do not fear. See, your Elohim comes with vengeance, and the recompense of Elohim, he is coming to save you. Now let's read that same verse in the Aramaic Bashetta. Which says, Say to those who are fearful, who say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your Elohim, the Avenger, is coming. Even Elohim, the Savior, is coming to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Hallelujah. So your Elohim, the Avenger, is coming. Even Elohim, the Savior, is coming to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. I wanted to repeat that. Now, notice how the Masoretic text omits the part that says, even Elohim the Savior, right? So here we see that Yahweh calls Yeshua Elohim because he is um, the son of Yahweh. He is of the same nature, the, the same divinity, okay? So, of course, he would be Elohim, and he calls him Savior, okay? Because he has the same the divine nature as the Father. And listen, in verse 5 tells us, that this Elohim and Savior will open the eyes of the blind and the deaf shall hear. Where do we see this written concerning the Savior that is spoken of in Isaiah 35, 4? Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 4 through 5. Matthew chapter 11, verse 4 through 5. Yeshua answered and said to them, Go and relate to Yochanan, which is John, that you have heard. Go and relate to John that you have heard and have seen. The blind are seeing, the lame are walking, and the lepers cleanse, and the deaf are hearing. What a beautiful fulfillment of the prophecy that we just read from Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4, from the Aramaic. Fulfilled in Matthew chapter 11, verse 5 through 4 through 5. Again. Again, this Elohim and Savior, he says, is coming to you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And here we see Yeshua saying, the blind are seeing, the lame are walking, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf are hearing. Hallelujah. Now, let's go over to Isaiah chapter 48, verse 16. There's a lot of good information to go over here, so, so bear with me, but it's all beautiful, truly beautiful. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 16 says, Come near me, listen to this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the creation, there I am. There am I, and now Yahweh Elohim in his spirit has sent me. I'll read it again. Come near me, listen to this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the creation, there I am. And now Yahweh Elohim and his spirit has sent me. As we see from this scripture, Yeshua is the one speaking here. He is the one speaking and he says that he was here from the very beginning, just as John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, which is Yeshua HaMashiach. All you do is look no more than Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, and it says his robe was dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahweh. That goes right back to John 1, and the beginning was the Word. So right here in Isaiah 48, 16, in the Tanakh, in the Old Covenant, we see Yeshua speaking before he even became uh, flesh, before he walked the earth. This is a beautiful scripture, my fellow brothers and sisters. Yeshua then goes on to say that Yahweh and the spirit, which you know is the Ruach HaKodesh, has sent him. 
So this scripture puts to rest the doubts about the divinity of Yeshua, his origin, or him not being the Savior for us sent by Yahweh the Father. Because that's him speaking right here. And he, he names three. He names a two outside of himself. So I see complete unity and oneness of three operating as one complex, unique Elohim. Hallelujah. Three operating as one complex, unique Elohim. And I tell you, he is so complex and unique. And that's about the best way that I can explain it. We probably, um, a lot of people get on people about what, the way they, they, they say, oh, you, 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 that's pagan. It is not pagan. It's one Elohim. But he's so complex and unique that it's unfathomable for the mind to understand. But we just have to understand it. Another example that this, this I'm going to give you is another example of the unique, complex nature of the Father and the Son's oneness. Ahad. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10 says, And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of favor and of mercies. They shall look upon me, Yahweh, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, Yeshua, as they mourn, for an only son, and shall grieve for him as they grieve over the firstborn. Did you catch that? This is beautiful oneness of our Elohim. Yahweh says that he is pierced because they will look upon him whom they pierced, right? Yet, yet Yahweh doesn't die because he is spirit. But his son Yeshua, who was a part of Yahweh, is the one that dies. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I mean about complex, unique. Okay. It is, we, it, it's just beautiful. It is so beautiful. Yah, they looked upon Yahweh whom them peer, who they pierced, but Yeshua is the one who died. I cannot express with words how beautiful this is and how awesome he works. How can, the point that I'm making is this. How can anyone have the Father without the Son, as John mentions when Yeshua is a part of the Father? How can anyone deny Yeshua when he is in the Father and the Father is in him? It is impossible for anybody to say that Yeshua is not the Savior and then they have the Father. What we see from Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 is that they are complete one. Let's look at John chapter 14 verse 9 through 12. John chapter 14, verse 9 through 12. Yeshua said to him, I am, I am with you all this time, and you do not know me, Philip. Whoever sees me sees the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? Do, don't you believe that I am in my Father and my Father is in me? Just as we just read from Zechariah 12, 10. That Yahweh is the one who was pierced, but they mourn for Yeshua, the one that died. Do you see that now? Do you not believe that I am in my Father and my Father is in me? These words that I speak, I do not speak of myself, but he who dwells in me. My Father does these works. Believe that I am in my Father and my Father is in me. Otherwise, believe even because of the works. Hallelujah. The best way, the best way that I can explain are Elohim's awesome unique complex nature is we as humans are made up of three components we are soul spirit and body first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 shaul paul says and may the elohim of peace sanctify you kadosh you all perfectly and keep blameless your whole spirit and your soul and your body to the comings to the comings of our master Yeshua the Messiah. Now here we go. So the soul and the spirit are both invisible, but our bodies are visible. So the same is with our Elohim. 
Yahweh and the Ruach HaKodesh are both invisible, but Yeshua HaMashiach is visible. Look how beautiful that is. That's about the best way that I can explain that complex, unique nature. An example of the oneness I'm conveying is even found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. From the Genesis Apoc Apocryphon, column 20, verse 8 says, uh, When the king heard the words of Harkonos and the words of his two companions, for the three of them spoke as one man. So it's not a foreign, this is not some foreign concept that the, even, even in Genesis Apocrypha and the Dead Sea Scrolls shows that three men spoke as one man. The same way we have Yahweh, the same way we have Yeshua, the same way we have the Ruach HaKodesh. Yahweh and the Ruach, the, the Holy Spirit are invisible, but Yeshua is visible. They are three operating as one. It is so amazing. So in other words, you can't have Yahweh without Yeshua, period. Now, also look at how the enemy, Satan, duplicates what Yahweh does because look at what he does. He has the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. I wonder where he got this concept from. There it is. So now... Let us go to the, the ancient Odeo language for more proof that Yeshua is our Savior. Okay, the very first word in the scriptures, Bereshit, the very first word, Bereshit means in the beginning. It shows that our Father Yahweh declared the end from the very beginning in the very first word. And we know Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10 says, Yahweh has declared the end from the beginning. And that's exactly what he did. Using the audio, the ancient pictograph Hebrew language tells us the truth about Yeshua and what he came to do. As our father Yahweh sent him to do, right? So, uh, Bereshit in Hebrew in the audio is spelled Beit, Resh, Olive, Sheen, Yad Tau. Okay, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna attempt to show this to you on here the best way that I can so you can follow. We have bait right here. It's a picture of a house. It represents uh, Yeshua. It represents a house. It represents family. And then you have uh, Resh right here. It's a picture of a man's head, which means highest, chief, first, top, beginning. Okay. And then we have Aleph. Aleph, let me see if I can, right here. It's a picture of an ox head. It represents Yahweh. It represents strength, power, leader, father, headship. Then we have Sheen, right here. It's a picture of two front teeth, which means to destroy, to devour, sharp, press, or eat. Then we have Yod, right here, or Yod. It's a picture of an arm and a hand, which means to work, throw, actions, deeds. And then we have Tau right here. It's a picture of two, two cross sticks, or what Christianity would call a cross. Um, it means mark, sign, signal, monument, or covenant. Okay, so that is how you spell better sheet in the ocean. And that's how you spell better sheet. Beit, Resh, Aleph, Sheen, Yad, Tau. And I gave you the definitions for each one of them means, right? So when you combine the words for better sheet, the very first word in scripture, we see that Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. Which says, the son's house of the most high Yahweh shall be destroyed by his own hand on a stake, an execution stake. Or, like I said, Christianity would say cross. So it shows you that right there from the very first word shows that Yeshua would die for our sins on the stake. Okay, so I'll read it again. The son's house of the most high Yahweh shall be destroyed by his own hand on a stake. So the audio matches perfectly with Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10. 
Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, which is a, uh, a prophecy uh, of Yeshua dying for the sins of the world. Isaiah 53, verse 10 in the Aramaic Peshetta says, Yet it pleased Yahweh to afflict or crush him. He has put him to grief. He has laid down his life as an offering for sin, that posterity may see, and his days shall be prolonged, and that pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hands. Right there, it matches perfectly. Then the audio tells us in Yahweh's name about what Yeshua will come to do to die for our sins. In Yahweh's own name. Y-H-W-H is yad Hey wah Hey, yad Hey wah Hey, yahweh yad Hey wah Hey, yahweh right? Y-H-W-H. And again, Yahweh is spelled Yod right there. It's a picture of an arm, an arm or a hand, which means work or action. And then we have the uh, Hey which is a spiritual man, which means behold, look, or reveal. Then we have a uh, wall right here. It's a picture of a tent peg. It means hook, nail, secure, uh, you know, a tent peg, which I mentioned, right? And then we have hay again. Yod, hay, wall, hay. All right? So when you combine those four together, it get you get the message. It says, hand, behold, Nail, behold. Hand, behold. Nail, behold. The truth is right in our faces when we look at the ancient language, which again is pointing to Yeshua HaMashiach. Now remember, hand, behold. Nail, behold. Right? Or behold, nail. Behold, hand. Let's go look at John chapter 20, verse 24 through 28, so we see this fulfillment. Now, now, Thomas, one of the twelve, he was called the twin, was not there with them when Yeshua came and the disciples said to him, we have seen our master. But he said to them, unless I see the places of the nails in his hands and the place, look at that. Did you see that? Unless I see the places of the nails in his hand, unless I see the places of the nails in his hands. Hand, behold, nail, behold, in Yahweh's name. There it is. Unless I see the places of the nails in his hands and the place, and I place my fingers in them and I stretch forth my hand in his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, the disciples, the Talmudim, were again inside and Thomas was with them. And Yeshua came while the doors were locked and stood in their midst and he said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, place your fingers here and see my hands and place your hand and stretch it in my side and do not be an unbeliever, but a believer. And Thomas answered, just as the entire world should be doing today. And he says, my master and my Elohim. Mari Alahi. In the Aramaic, my master, my Elohim. That right there again does away with anybody questioning his divinity, okay? Because it's right there. And anyway, it fulfills what I was just saying about Yahweh's name. Yahweh's name right there, Y H W H, Yod Hey Wad Hey. Hand behold, nail behold, and we see Yeshua talked about the hands and the nails in his hands right there. So beautiful. Now, let's look at more Savior proof from the Aramaic. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 in the Aramaic, Peshetta says, Thus saith Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Savior, Yahweh of hosts. I am the first and the last, and besides me, there is no Elohim. How beautiful is that? This is a powerful and clear message, which shows that Yahweh speaking and referring to another that is Savior, but yet one with him. Oh my goodness gracious. Complex and unique. So if you're going to read Isaiah 43, 11, 
flip over to the next ver the next chapter and look at Isaiah 44 verse 6 in Aramaic Peshatta. You gotta get you gotta get this. You can't we, you can't read one verse and then not read the others. But as I've shown from the Aramaic Peshatta, even in Isaiah 43, 11, Yahweh is saying that it's Yahweh and Yeshua speaking as one. Yahweh, even I. Oh, so beautiful. All right, so this is another powerful, clear message which shows that Yahweh is speaking and referring to another that is Savior, but yet, but yet one with him. Yet they are both one Elohim. And he says, besides me, there is no Elohim, which includes the Son. Yeshua's name literally means Yahweh is salvation because Yahweh sent his son to die for our sins. It is so beautiful. Hallelujah. We, we can't, like I said, we can't read Isaiah 43, 11 without going to read the next chapter. And I especially get back into reading to Ar the Aramaic text. Okay. Now, um, let's go and look at some other texts of what I'm talking about, some other chapters, because, um, like I said, the Pharisees are trying to hide this truth because they rejected Yeshua HaMashiach when he walked the earth. So um, we know that the Septuagint was written about 260 B.C., which is the uh, where the 70 Jewish scholars translated from uh, the Hebrew to the Greek, right? So we know that the Aramaic became before that, right? So... The point that I'm making is that 1,100 years later, they came up with the Masoretic text, and that is what people are following and reading today, and that's where they're getting this false doctrine about Yeshua not being Savior, Yeshua not being the Son of Yahweh. That's where all this is coming from. So I'm going to give you another powerful one, Isaiah 49, verse 7, and I'm going to read it to you from the Masoretic, and then I'm going to read it to you in the Aramaic, and you're going to see a huge difference. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 7, and the Masoretic says, Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to the despised, to the loathed one of the nation, to the servant of rulers, sovereigns shall see and arise, rulers shall also bow themselves, because of Yahweh who is steadfast, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. I don't know about you all, but that was confusing. That was confusing. Let's read it in the Aramaic Peshatta. I'm going to break it down line by line so you'll see. Okay. So Aramaic Peshatta, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 7. I read to you the Masoretic. Now let's read it in the, in the true language. Thus saith Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, and his Savior. Did the Masoretic text say anything about his Savior? No, it didn't. Thus saith Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, and his Savior, which is his Son. To him whose soul is despised, to him who is abhorred by the people. Now look at this. I'm going to break it down. To him whose soul is despised and him who is abhorred by the people. Who else could that be? John chapter 15 verse 18. Yeshua says, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before you. Let's continue. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 7. This is still continuing on. And by the servants of the rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship him. Like I said, you can't have, you can't have the father without the son. And here Yahweh is saying in Isaiah 49 verse 7 in Aramaic, And by the servants of rulers, kings shall arise and princes shall worship him, which is Yeshua. But Yahweh and Yeshua are one. So he says that they shall worship him, his son. Where else do we see this? Enoch chapter 48, verse 2 through 5. Enoch chapter 48, verse 2 through 5. And at that hour, the son of man, which we know is Yeshua, was named in the presence of the master of spirits and his name before the head of days. Yes, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made. In the beginning was the word, right? Anyway, going back. Yes, before the sun and the stars were created, before the stars of the heaven were made, his name was named before the master of spirits. So Yeshua was named in the presence of Yahweh. He would be a staff to the righteous on which to steady themselves and not fall. He would be a light to the nations and he will be a hope to those who are troubled of heart. 
and all who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him and will praise and bless and celebrate the master of spirits. So Enoch just says the same thing we just read from Isaiah 49, 7 and the Aramaic Peshetta, that Father Yahweh says that they shall worship him. And here in Enoch 48, verse 2 through 5, Yahweh says here that all shall worship, all on earth shall fall down and worship before him. Hallelujah. How can it be blasphemous when Yeshua is one with the Father? He's the same divine nature as the Father. It's so beautiful. And if you notice, even in um, when Yeshua walked on water, when Yeshua walked on water and he got into the boat, all of the disciples worshipped Yeshua in the boat. Yeshua didn't say, hey, don't worship me. Because Yeshua is completely divine as the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Elohim willing, I'm going to do another one. I'll be able to do another message uh, about, about this. And just, just give nothing but a bunch of scriptures concerning it. So let's read Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 through 11 to continue on to add on to the worship. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 through 11 in the Aramaic English New Testament. Like I said, I'm reading out of all Aramaic. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the stake. Wherefore also Elohim has highly exalted him and given him a name which is more excellent than all the names. That at the name of Yeshua, because Yeshua means Yahweh is salvation, every knee should bow of beings in the heavens and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Master Yahweh is Yeshua HaMashiach to the esteem of Elohim his father. Again, showing that Yahweh and Yeshua are one. If Yahweh is Yeshua HaMashiach to the esteem of Elohim, that means that Yahweh is also dwelling within him through the Ruach HaKodesh. <laughs> it is so complex and unique, but truly beautiful that the three are operating as one. Yahweh and Yeshua are one. So that's uh, three scriptures showing that he will be worshipped and every knee will bow. Now, let's continue on with Isaiah 49, 7. Continue. Because Yahweh, who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, has chosen you. You see that? He says that Yahweh has chosen you. Who did he choose? His son, Yeshua HaMashiach. So how can anybody say that Yeshua is not Savior? With all of this evidence that's been presented here. How can anybody say that? Now. Like I said. Yahweh is faithful. As he just said himself in verse 7. We know that he is because he is awesome. He does not lie. Yahweh is faithful to deliver on his promises. To send a savior for his people Israel. And he did so by choosing his son Yeshua. Okay. And as I just told you. And as you just seen for yourself, the Aramaic Peshetta reads completely different than the Aramaic. I mean, the Aramaic reads completely different than the Masoretic. And it was done for a reason. These scriptures have, I've, I've just read to you that says that Yahweh and his Savior. And his Savior. I can't stress it enough. All right, so let's, let's take a look. So, what I want to say really quick is that the, those who have rejected him need to repent today and accept Yeshua as Savior who died for our sins and rose on the third day and realize that Yahweh and the Son Yeshua are one Elohim. One Elohim. Let's look at the, the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, to see this. Yahweh mentioned several times in Isaiah, as I just pointed out, about he and his Savior which is Yeshua. And we see the fulfillment of this in the new covenant. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 33. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 33. For behold, you will receive conception and bear a son, and you will call his name Yeshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. This one will be great and we will be called the son of the highest and master and Master Yahweh, your Elohim, will give to him the throne of David, Dawid, 
his father. And he will reign over the house of Yaakov, Jacob, forever. And there will not be an end to his kingdom forever. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. I just want to go to match that with what I just read. For to us, a child is born. And this is even in the Aramaic. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name is called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty One. The Everlasting Ale. So this child is called Elohim. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's... His name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty One, the Everlasting Ale, what people would say, G-O-D, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of his peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, which we just read from Luke, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to sustain it with justice and righteousness from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of Yahweh of Hosts, Yahweh save our oath will perform this. So how do we completely do away with that prophecy as we saw fulfilled in Luke 1 right there? Okay, and it says the zeal of Yahweh performs this. So if you don't believe that, then you're saying you don't believe what Yahweh had just said he would perform. I think it's truly beautiful. Yahweh said he would do it and his word does not return to him void. And we, like I said, we also see that this prophecy in Isaiah 9 calls the son, Yeshua, Elohim as well. Because as I've been saying throughout this entire message, Yahweh and Yeshua are one Elohim. Yeshua is in the Father and Yahweh is in Yeshua. Luke chapter 2 verse 11. For born to you. All today is the Savior that is Master Yahweh, the Messiah, Yahweh Yeshua one in the city of David. Here in the New Testament, like I said again, we see the divinity of Yeshua should no longer be questioned as Yahweh Yeshua are one. And and is the Savior being mentioned that I already read from Isaiah 44, verse 6, Isaiah 49, verse 7. Let's let's go through it again. Thus saith Yahweh, Isaiah 49, verse 7. The Holy One of Israel and his Savior to him whose soul is despised and to him who is abhorred by the people. Isaiah 44, verse 6, Aramaic Peshetta. Thus saith Yahweh, the King of Israel and his Savior, Yahweh of hosts, I am the first and the last, and besides me there is no Elohim. Hallelujah. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Thus, for Elohim loved the world so that he would give us his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have life that is eternal. For Elohim did not send his, word, his son into the world to condemn the world, but to give life to the world through him. He that believes in him is not condemned, but he that does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Elohim. Like I said, you cannot have the father without the son, Yeshua HaMashiach. If you don't believe in him, you are already condemned. Believe today that he is the son of Yahweh. Believe today that he is savior. First John 4, 14 through 15. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent the Son, a Redeemer for the world. Whoever confesses Yeshua to be the Son of Elohim, Elohim abides in him, and he abides to Elohim. 1 John 2, 21-25 I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no falsehood is of the truth. Who is false? but he that denies that Yeshua is Messiah. So anyone who denies that Yeshua is not the Messiah, not the Savior, is the false one. And what is John going to say? And that person is a false Messiah. He that denies the Father denies also the Son. And he that denies the Son also does not believe the Father. 
He that confesses the Son confesses also the Father. And what you heard from the first, let that remain with you. Because there's only one truth. Don't change that truth that you already have. Let that truth, as I've explained in this entire message, remain with you. For that which you heard from the first remains with you. You also will remain in the Father and in the Son. So when you keep that truth that has been delivered to you in this message, as is which I'm just reading from the scriptures, the only one true truth, then you will remain in the Father and in the Son, as John just says. And this is the promise which he has promised us, even life eternal. There is no other truth. I'm just going to let the scriptures speak for themselves. John chapter 17, verse 3. Now this is life that is eternal, that they might know you, that you are the Elohim of truth. And he alone whom you have sent, the Messiah Yeshua, that is everlasting life. In order to obtain eternal life, you must believe in the Father and the Son. And that Yahweh sent his Son, Yeshua, to die for us all. He is our Savior. And that the Father and the Son are one Elohim. That is life that is eternal. Yeshua is the bread of life born in Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. How beautiful is that? Eat this spiritual bread and live forever or eat the physical bread and eventually die. The choice is yours. John chapter 6, verse 27 through 51. Do not labor for food that perishes, rather for food that endures to life that is everlasting. That which the Son of Man will give to you. For this man, Elohim the Father, has sealed. They said to him, what should we do to work the deeds of Elohim? Yeshua answered and said to them, This is the work of Elohim, that you should believe in him whom he sent. They said to him, What miracle do you perform that we may see and believe in you? What have you shown? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written that he gave them bread from the Shamaim, the heaven to eat. Yeshua said to them, Amen, Amen. I say to you that it was not Moshe, Moses, that gave bread to you from the Shamaim, the heaven, but my father gives true bread to you from heaven. Yeshua was the bread of life from Bethlehem, the house of bread. For, th for his bread is that of Elohim. He who has come has come down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, our master gave this bread to us to eat at all times. They said to him, Our master, give this bread to us at all times. Yeshua said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will not ever thirst. But I have said to you that you have seen me, and you do not believe. Just as the world is doing, not just as a lot of people in this world are doing today. They don't believe. All who my father has given to me will come. And whoever comes not to me, I will cast outside. For I came down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is his will, that of him who sent me. That all that he has given to me, I do not lose even one. For this is the will of my father that all who see the Son and believe in him will have life that is eternal. And I will raise him up on the last day. Then going over to verse 44 through 51. All main, all main, I say to you, that whoever believes in me has life that is eternal. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. But this is the bread that has descended from the heaven that a man may eat from it and he will not die. I am the living bread who has descended from the heaven. And if a man should eat from this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give is my body, which I give for the sake of the life of the world. Hallelujah. So how can you have the father 
without the Son if you're not eating the bread of life. Eating earthly bread, which is physical food, is not going to give you eternal life. You will hunger again. But partaking in the bread of life, which is the bread of life, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, the living Torah, whom Yahweh sent for your sins, he will give you life that is eternal. Recognize today that Yahweh and Yeshua are one. We serve a complex, unique, beautiful, awesome Elohim, which we see that is conveyed in the Aramaic language and conveyed through the Odeo, the ancient pictograph. There's just no getting around this. And today, I pray that some eyes are open and that you accept him today and stop denying and rejecting him and to repent if you have. Because Yeshua said you can speak a word against him and it will be forgiven. Hallelujah. As always, may our Father Yahweh bless you in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Please share this with those who need to hear it. And um, also as well, if um, you are being led to donate to Yeshua, uh, to Yeshua Saves All, I always leave the information in the description box. It really helps me because this is what I do um, full time. And I can really um, use any donation that you feel led to send to support Yeshua Saves All as we walk together, serving you, walking with Yeshua HaMashiach, serving him. Hallelujah and Shalom.